good lighting. Bad lighting. Okay, we're gonna back oh, up yeah. the sun. Okay. Go ahead and do that. Is it but, live? Yes, it's live. We're gonna go back up into the sun so that Terry can have better lighting. And let's see if this corrects it. <laughs> Here comes the uh, nervous attendant. Really? Better? No. With this. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Get Terry in the sun. Oh yeah, now I'm getting you. Good morning. Sun. Good morning. Okay. As I said, this is going to be a short Sunday morning service. Stay there, baby. That's okay. You That's all right. Me? Come here, baby. Let's start off with a word of prayer. In the sun, so we can see you. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. You need to hear me more than see me, That's though, because I'm so beautiful. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for another day. I thank you for the word that you put on our hearts for each one that we'll hear this morning. And I thank you for the hungry hearts that will take time to listen to your word. Bless us to become more like you. From your word, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. First of all, Jesus we're sorry is... about last night. Yes. Uh, we were in Colorado Springs, and uh, we really meant to be back. We've been snowbound, and we're not sure what we're going to run into between Pueblo and Dalhart. But we'll be finding out. Keep pointing. My director's pointing me into the sun. That's right. Because you can't see you. You're in a shadow. But uh, we didn't have enough internet strength last night, so the, the service failed. Right now, we're in front of Sam's Club in Pueblo because as we left Colorado Springs this morning, I went by 7-Eleven to take care of a low tire because of the cold, cold air. It makes the tires go down a little. The valve stem broke on the front tire, and I stood there and watched the air all run out of my <laughs> tire. And I said, you're going to practice what you preach. That's right. And believe. God yep. has got everything under control. And everything we, is His timing, it's isn't His it? It's His timing. We were so thankful. That was your phone. So oh. thankful that Susie wasn't with us because that would have been yeah. a panic for her, even though we weren't moving. Right. The tire went flat. Mm -hmm. Got the little donut out and got it put on and uh, made it to Pueblo, and now we're going to let Sam's Club take care of the rest of it. But last night we had a word that the Lord put on my heart that I'm still so eager to share with you guys about the fear of God. And uh, I can't go into the whole thing. I don't have time, and there's another word that I need to give you. So I want to say this about the fear of God, and I hope you'll join us at church Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday of the next week because we're going to share a lot of this. When you think of the fear of God, it's an absolute essential in our life to be holy. The fear of God makes sense when you think of it like this. Electricity, as good as it is for us, as much as it, as much as it makes comfort and, and, and meets needs in our lives, if you go into a, a, a huge generator area where there's lots of electricity being made and you're not properly properly dressed and properly attired and you don't know what to do, you're in extreme danger because of the power there. You have to have a healthy fear of something that's like that. God himself, and we have all these scriptural references that we went over last night, God is not like us anymore. He's like the part of us that's born again for instance, John on the Isle of Patmos, when he stood before the presence of Jesus Christ as God, he fell as though his body were dead and he had to be touched and raised up to life. Everything you're living in, the ears that are listening to me right now, the eyes that are looking at me right now, are all temporary things that are going to be done away with. They cannot stand in the presence of God. But what is born again in you in John 3, where you were born again, that is being born and made to exist in his presence. And if you don't nurture that, there will be nothing left of you when you stand before God. Yeah. We have to learn who God is, and there's a whole message behind this, the fear of God. It's a natural thing. We want to leave our flesh aside. Jesus said you must die to live, that you have to die to this life because this life cannot stand in the presence of God. But the new life in you can stand in the presence of God. It's made in the image of God. And all through scripture after scripture after scripture, I can share with you how we're to go boldly before the presence of God. You can't go in your flesh, and you can't go if you're not walking in the Spirit of God. You can't stand before God. Time after time after time in the Old Testament, people died because they were not prepared or they touched the Ark of the Covenant. The Bible says that God struck them, but it's not like he struck them. They did what is not compatible, and they died because of God's laws and his rules. It says there were... 50,070 men of Beth Shemesh, which was a city in Israel that are these men of, of Palestine who had stolen the ark, they all wanted to look inside it out of curiosity and 50,070 of them died from that like a slower death, it didn't say that they all died immediately, but they all died because they looked into the ark, 
you do not have what it takes to go before God and yet we so familiarly post scriptures and we say God's going to give me this and God's going to trust in God pass this on and God will bless you we don't know what we're talking about <clears throat> God is like the great power of a generator in a dam there's enough electricity to light cities there's enough power to light cities but if you touch one part of it the wrong way you die Jesus came to show us how to get the dying out of the way so that what's born in us can live in the presence of God eternally with him as our father. Okay, that was the message that I want to get into later. This is the short, short message for this morning. Discipleship. If you're going to learn this, if you want to know what we're talking about, for crying out loud, we can't just keep going to church on Sunday and hoping we've got it right and post scriptures on Facebook. There's more to that. If you decided today that you wanted to learn karate, even if you just wanted to learn it for self-defense and that's all. You're not interested in being a great martial arts expert. Once you get involved and you find out, what do I have to do? They'll say three times a week you need to come in. You need to do these exercises. If you don't do them, don't expect to learn karate. But if you do them and you devote yourself, you start to find, you start to find some things changing in your life. And if you do it and you go through that first test and you find that you've learned what you wanted to learn, I'll guarantee you something, you're going to want to go into the next belt. And you're going to want to go further. And you're going to want to find out what are my limitations. That's Christianity in every way. Mm -hmm. Any Anything you join, if you really care about it, you want to be great at it. You want to be good at it. We take Christianity as a social entrance into a club or an organization. And we say, I'm a Christian now. I've been baptized. I'm on, I've got this together. I go on Sundays, yes, and I tithe. That's not it at all. Have you turned your eyes upon Jesus? Have you looked full in his wonderful face? If you don't, you may not be there. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. things that around you will go, they should be fading in your life. If everything that you're caring about is still your family, your job, your career, your health, you're still working for things that are all going to be destroyed. And none of those things, your precious baby children, your, your money, your career, anything, none of that will stand before God. And you can only prepare your children to be able to stand before God if you come first and let your flesh die away and you learn how to be in the presence of God. It is a fearful thing to be in the presence of God mm -hmm. because you know there's enough power. There's the power there that spoke you into existence and it can speak you out of existence. But the more you learn the fear of God, the more you will understand the love of God. Amen. And they come hand in hand. It comes through a total devotion to discipleship to Christ follow Christ. The theme of our church is gladly taking the yoke of Christ and learning of him. Please come join us and learn what we're doing. It's all from scripture. It all sounds pretty strange because there's a lot of talk about dying and suffering, but it's every word of it coming directly from scripture. Think about it. Pray about it and pray for us as we make our way home. Mm -hmm. We'll be leaving here. We may be staying on the road again somewhere else on the way back, but we will see you all good Lord willing. Wednesday, Wednesday night, night at, at 7, 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And we sure hope to see you. Yes. Lord bless y'all. Have a wonderful Sunday. We love you. Yes, Go we to do. church somewhere and then yeah. come see us when we open our doors again. That's right. Okay. Bye from Bye. Pueblo. Bye. Bye. <laughs>